Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Town of Newton Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, August 6, 2024. And we apologize for the late start, but we had a little bit of a technical glitch. But the meeting is called to order at 6.05. I'd like to start the meeting by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll stand and I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag. flag. To the flag United of the United States, United States of America, America. and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Well, I'd like to uh, start with uh, citizens' input. Do we have any input from any of the citizens in the audience or anyone in Zoom? Hearing none, we will move on to administration. We have a representative from uh, Devlin Energy, Charles Jenkins, to give a presentation on uh, solar. Okay. Yep, please, right to the left. All right, well, thank you for having me here today and giving me some of your time. Um, I have been having conversations with uh, Trisha McCarthy here on and off for some months. And uh, we have discussed doing perhaps a, a idea of doing solar on the, uh, I believe it's the fire department is most viable, right? That's a newer building, was it? Yeah, yeah, the other one you said was probably not feasible. So <clears throat> there's a couple different questions. I sent an outline of questions um, along that I think you pass along as well. Um, one, one of the first things I do ask is, you know, age and condition of the roof. Look at the structure. How many meters are there? What is the usage in the building? That way we can design a system that will fulfill your needs. Um, one, one of the other big questions would be, who, who wants to fund and own that? Would that be something that the town of uh, Newton would be wanting to own, or do you, should I find third-party funding, do you suppose? That's another question that would come into play. The reason I ask that is that <clears throat> if the town owns it, they receive all the benefits that are available through the federal and state incentive plans that are out there. If a third party owns it, they receive all the incentives from the federal, state, et cetera, and would then probably um, provide the town with a lease payment and a small discount on usage on the building itself. So that would be the variables, own it or not own it, and there are some repercussions either way. But uh, in most cases, if you do own the project, you benefit greatly from all the incentives and, and so on. Um, if you don't own it, somebody else does, and you benefit from a lease payment and some discount on your, your rate payments. Um, and I think we're gonna just talk about that today. Yes, sir. Education, the town administrator said, tell us how that works. Okay. Mike Carmen, oh. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Mike Conley has his One of the selectmen, he's, he's in on Zoom up there. Okay, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. So, holy cow. If, if uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so, if we don't own it, yeah. uh, there's two things I'm gonna ask you. It's probably 20 to 25 year power purchase agreement, am I correct? Generally, yes. And then are you, if it's you doing it, are you willing to eliminate escalators? Eliminate escalators? Yes. For a power purchase agreement? Yes. Um. I would have to check on that actually. Uh, not generally normally done, but not out of the, uh, let me just make a note of that for you. Yep. And then, so I want the, if we were to move forward, I would not want escalators in this, number one. 
and then number two um, would have to really sit down and talk about what you're going to charge, right? So, and that and that's uh, let me I, let me I, just clarify. That's if we do a PPA. Correct. Okay. Um, I don't see the town in uh, full disclosure I'm in your industry, not full time, it, but it's part of what my company does. It's not what I focus on. Uh, however, the town owning and taking that responsibility over 20, 25 years, the yeah. maintenance and everything else, um, they may decide, the citizens may decide, I'd have that, I'd make it very clear what that means to them. So I'd really want to know on your side what you could lock down as far as a price. You own everything, that power purchase agreement. Um, but I am not looking for, and I've done this several times without escalators. I'm looking for something without escalators so that the citizens of this town know exactly the price for 20, 25 years out, depending on the term of that agreement. Right, and that, that, would, that would be if indeed you chose the power purchase agreement, right? So Correct. other options that are available is that you're not under any obligation to buy any power. Somebody else is going to essentially own this project. Um, you will just then be getting a 10% discount on whatever rate you're paying. Plus, if there's would, a credit involved, I get it. The credits, I get. Uh, but I want yeah, all yeah. options on the table. And the one thing I would stipulate is the PPA has to have a flat to it. Okay. Being a flat price. Well, I can, I can. Uh, Put a proposal together that would include that option. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Thank uh, you. I'm not sure if that's uh, well. That's uh, that wouldn't be my first choice, to be honest. But I guess that's it's a good good thought, and I will make sure that we get a proposal that reflects that for you. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So we just like to look at all the different options that are available. Yeah. to see, like you said, w which would fit the town the best. Right, right, right. And, it, you know, obviously we have fiscal limitations, uh, you know, that we have to be concerned with. I understand right. that. Um, and so what we need to do, I guess, first and foremost, we answer the questions, some of the questions that I outlined to you earlier. So I can then put together proposals that will answer those questions for you. Yep. How much is it to, to own the system? What does it look like to just receive lease payments on the system if you have a third party buyer, right? A third yep. party owner. And uh, similarly, it would be a third party owner that would offer a PPA and what those terms would be. I've heard from the subtle gentleman, I didn't catch his name, I'm sorry. Um, you know, he's looking for no escalators. He said he's done it before, but we can ask the question. Yep. I'm not sure if it's going to be That's terribly select with well. Mike Conley. Mike? Okay. Yeah. Um, not so sure that people are going to be all that excited about it, but we got to ask the question. <coughs> yep. Understood. Uh, generally, escalators are very small in, in my experience over time, but uh, I've done 100 megawatts of PPAs uh, over the years, so right. we, can, we can ask that question yep. and also like you, you were talking about with the the state and the federal um, money that's available if we were to go that route with that what would up what would our price be in comparison with those in, right right right, right, right. And so then, and then what would take place from there so what we would do if if the town were to own the project right there's several different incentive plans. First and foremost is the federal government has the IRA plan, Investment Recovery Act, or um, it, no, no, Inflation Recovery Act yep. is what the actual terms were for the legislation. And that gives you a 30% tax event if you're for profit or payment from the government if you are a nonprofit, all right? So, and that's on the total of their project and, you know, at hand. 
if you were to have to, I'll give you an example, repair a roof, you would get, be able to roll in the cost of the, the roof replacement to the project and receive 30% on that as well. Okay, but this is a new roof from what I understand. I think Trisha told me it's like yeah. only three years old or something. I don't think you have any concerns there, but if you did, just as an example, that's the way it works. Um, there's REAP grants available. I think I already checked, I might have put it in my letter to you, that the fire station, police station area does not get you into a REAP grant scenario. You're not, uh, you know, it's not available, um, which is too bad because that's pretty powerful, but some other places might, right? Some other areas that we can look at. Um, and then there's also New Hampshire state incentives. And it, it, has a, it has a cap on it up to like $10,000, but what they do is they give you 20 cents per KWH for the size of the system, and you get that, boom. But ten thousand dollars tops. But I'm, based on what I've seen on the, the the roof that I'm looking at, you would probably be under, within that cap. So you probably, you know, do pretty well with the state incentive. Um, there are such things as the renewable energy credits, and those vary state to state. So we'd have to look at it because they vary actually. Um, on a, on a market, they have a market that moves up and down. So I usually don't even put those in my proposals because it's something you get sort of like, say, a cherry on top. You get those, you sell them on an open market, um, whatever they happen to be going for at that time, all right? But um, it is a factor that you should be aware of, that there's, that's an extra added benefit. Um, and that's if you own it, right? Yeah. To be clear. Now, if we work, if we take it and work it with a third party owner, then you're in the situation where you don't get any of the incentives. The owner gets them all. And the reason why they do that is because most of them are, they have a tax equity appetite, which means they want to take the tax uh, event for a tax write off, right? So they, they may be. Um, a lot of my uh, investors I have are like, say, they sold a, a, a large uh, computer software company or something, and they have a bunch of money sitting around. If they don't do something with it that's, that fits into some kind of a tax, you know, experience, they're going to just pay it out to the government. So they're willing to invest in sustainable energies because it gives them that ability to take that tax event. Those are the types of people who generally, I got to have a lot from Silicon, Silicon Valley because they've sold a software product, they got a ton of money sitting around, and they got to figure out something to do with it. And they're into redu renewable energy causes. Um, so those folks would own it. They would get all the um, incentives, and you would, would receive, the town, I'm sorry, would receive a lease agreement, a lease payment uh, annually for uh, the, the space on your roof, <coughs> right? And generally, um, you will get a industry standards like 10% discount on your usage per watt, per kWh, right? Yep. So that's kind of the way they bundle it. Now, if you want to get into the PPA, that's the other way that a third party would funding group would work. Uh, I'm thinking... Most of my third party uh, it can, you know, interests would not want to do a PPA that's on something that small, right? If you had a larger property and you're talking like a megawatt or something, or several megawatts, that's when the PPAs really seem to be more attractive. These guys, uh, funding groups are not really going to probably want to do a PPA on a small building. But they, they have like thresholds. Um, because they want to, when they want to, when they need to invest, they want to move um, large amounts of money in tranches. Mike has his hand up. I'm sorry? Mike has his hand up. Yeah, we can't see that. Okay, very 
Okay, go ahead, Michael, please. What size system are you estimating for that facility? I haven't estimated the system yet because I don't have all the information to do the proposal, but okay. it doesn't look like it's probably, I'm trying to think. If I were in my mind's eye, I'm thinking probably 60 kWh DC, something like that, but that's just a off the cuff. So I'd have to uh, really have a proposal done, put it through my design team. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. But, uh, but Michael, just to, to continue on that thought process is that most of the third party groups, um, they, they may not want to do a PPA for a smaller thing like that. But like I said, we can ask, right? You never oh, yeah. know. No, that's, that's either going to be a small commercial or um, large residential size so um, i get it I correct get it. so essentially if you were to say 60 kwh you're talking four pretty good sized residential homes yeah something like that yep. right something like that yep and, yep. and no it's going to be small it's going to yep. be small I get yeah it. yeah yep so we need to cook that up put it in a proposal run it through the software and i have to run it by the third party investors for you um, and, and check out what our possibilities are. Who are your investors? Who? Yeah. Uh, I have several investors, actually. Um, some from New York, some from New Jersey, some from California, Canada. All right, so private? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Do anybody? I lost my train of thought on where I was going with that. Is there any, can we, is there any questions that will bring me back to it? <laughs> do, do we have any land that is feasible for a solar farm? From what I understand, yes, but it, it's, um, you, you said that, I, I think there's something at a bush farm, bush, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, I think you have some acreage there, um, which would be, viable and that would be something that you could do a larger project which we have more flexibility and options with these larger investors so say if you have uh it's, it's about four to five acres is, can get you a megawatt of, of power and it could become a community solar have, have you looked at the property near where we're gonna we're i don't know i don't know where the address is yet no there's another one near the transfer station have you oh Okay. Did the, is, it, is it on a landfill? No, uh, we we're putting a communications tower. So I didn't know if there's enough land there, maybe to do something on that same parcel. That'd be good to look at. I don't know how it works. Is, yeah, is, is, is there too many trees? Yeah. All right. So with a communications tower, I mean, do you have the ability to remove the trees or is that something you would be adverse to i mean that's not hard know, we have we have wetlands over there too yeah we need engineers that are waiting yeah. right 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 so i would make this suggestion if we do have some other options that you would like to uh, pursue or discover um you can perhaps give them to you know, let Trisha know, and he can, she can tell me um, wh where those options might be, and I can do a lot of work on the desktop, you know, just on satellite shots, and, you know, I can see topography and wetlands and everything on just from an address, right? And then we can talk further about that. And again, when you get into a project that size, most towns are, are, are it's not in their wherewithal to to it's like three million dollars per megawatt all right so if you're going to do it that's a lot of money for a small town right. no matter where you are um so that's generally we move into the scenario where you're not buying it i'm look i'm getting the third party funding group and then we we do all that exploration we need to know we'd have to we have to go through the whole um 
you know, we'd have to talk with the conservation committee, find out what the setbacks are, what they will be, because they vary. I mean, our, you know, setbacks can be, in Massachusetts, they're standard 100 foot setback, but I've gotten as close as 26. You know, so it's all a matter of perspective and what the town's um, government wants to, wants to work with and how they want to do that. But we have to, uh, you know, we'd have to start for, first and foremost with the, um, the town um, building inspector. He usually then gives you a checklist and a d map directing you, you got to go here, 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 get these boxes checked. We have to deal with the fire department. <laughs> um, uh, which everybody needs a set of plans. Every step we take, we have to give a set of plans to every department and they have to check off on those. Yep. So it's, it's, it's a process, but I've done it many times before, you know, just work through it, shoulder to shoulder. We can do it if we'd like. Yeah. Um, that's even more viable with the third party funding groups because they really like to move in larger chunks of money. Okay. Right. Then we have a more viable chance of talking about PPA um, on a community basis. So you can then put out, you know, send it on your, your town uh, website. That, would you like to be involved in a community solar program? People can sign up. You know, it's not a, something you, they have to do, but it's, they can opt in or not, right? Yeah. So that's the, the program that I would envision if you did something on a larger scale. Okay. So quick question. Yes. We lease, they put it up. Yes. At the end of the lease, they're responsible for removal and getting rid of that, right? Yes, decommissioning. If that's the case? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and I, let me just digress for a minute. I've been doing this for, you know, 15 years since the, the laws for net metering in Massachusetts came into effect, which was <coughs> 2010. So, uh, at first, the contracts did not have decommissioning written into it. And they're just like, well, hey, at the end of the thing, you know, you can have it or not. And truth be told, the panels last for quite a long time. You know, they only lose like 0.5% efficiency per year. So by the time you get up to like 50 years, you're still 70 something percent efficient. They'll last for 100. <laughs> They just, they, they just do decline, but they'll last. And what happens a lot of times is that when at the end of the lease agreement, like say it's 25 years, right? Oftentimes people will sell the equipment to uh, either somebody else and they can use the footprint and upgrade the system, renegotiate their, the contract, or it can be decommissioned and a lot of it gets sold in uh, third world, you know, developing countries. Okay. So, but if that's a c concern, which it has been over the years, it just needs to be written into the document that you, d that you have. We want it removed at the end. In some cases you can ask for a, um, um, what am I gonna say? Not a trust, uh, You can put, you say you got to put together something that's going to supply the money to get it decommissioned and removed when we're done. Right. Mm -hmm. Set a bond escrow. for it or whatever. Escrow. Yeah, escrow. Yeah. Or a bond. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so. If you want to look at uh, the F Harvey's Farm in Westboro, Mass, take a look at that. I can send you that too. You know, if you want to take a look around. But that one. So, so what we did there is um, we did close to two megawatts on Harvey's Farm in Westboro, and we sold the um, credits to the town of Westboro. So the town was able to take it off under a PPA uh, agreement. Th th that's how that worked. At, it was a good full circle um, example. And did the town residents benefit from it? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because the the town received the um, advantage of the credits, and it was, they were able to then, uh, you know, help the budget and overall fiscal okay. health of the town. Um, I've seen other ones where we've done, um, like, especially um, in Maine, they've got a very good, very strong community solar program now where, so if the town puts it in there, they can do exactly what I kind of explained to you folks a little earlier, is that they're able to put that in on somebody's land, right, and then make a deal so the town can have community solar options they can opt in to get reduced solar from this this community farm um, so i can send you a couple of examples if that helps but uh, i mean i was involved in doing several large landfill um, facilities and i like i sold 14 megawatts to the city of quincy um, Four megawatts to the town of Abington. You know, I mean, that's the kind of thing that goes on. You know, it's it's municipalities were have always been considered good partners in these this relationship because they're not transient like a business might be or um, a residential for folks and all that because they they move or right. businesses change hands and now we've got this stuff on the roof and what are we gonna do? But towns are, first of all, they're generally bonded, <coughs> right? So, and they're not transient. They're good partners for people who want to invest in these types of projects. They feel comfortable. They can, they know you're not going anywhere. There's security in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can offer. Anything else? We, we have any burning questions no, here? Pretty much covers it for me. Mike, you all set? Yeah, I'm good for now. I'm Anybody sorry, else? what do you say? He's good for now. Okay, so the, Mike, let me just, one last comment here is that, um, you know, you, you raised some, some good questions that um, I will bring answers to the board um, in short order to see what we can do for you. Uh, I'll be better prepared to, you know, tell you how much we can do on the fire station and what we're, we can do with our third-party funding groups uh, to negotiate a non-escalating PPA, if that's possible. Um, so I I'll, I'll, wanted to just assure you I took note of that and I will be coming back, okay? Thank you. Yeah, and, and I would say the fire department is a great place to start because the roof structure and I get that, but, you know, uh, work with Trish. Take a look at... Uh, not all our buildings, because I'll tell you, there's a lot of buildings that need new roofs, right? So we're not going to go down that road. <laughs> uh, but but uh, the land at the transfer station, the shading may be a problem. But just take a look at the land, right? So there may be a ground mount system that may work better for the town or add into what you're doing. Um, so I would just take a look at that. That's all I'd ask. So let me, let me uh, um, that, that's, that's a good thought, because... As I was explaining to you, uh, the group earlier, is that these third-party funding groups, they work in, they prefer to work in large quantities of money. You know, they like to move things like 10 million at a time. But if we have, if we were to do, say, a ground mount, and we were to put a couple megawatts on it, and then bundle a, another smaller project vis-a-vis -vis the, the um, fire station, well, we might be able to give them a nice little bone and get both done with the third party and have some negotiation power on a PPA. Yep. Right? No, I get it. Size matters. Yep. All right. Very good. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, anything else I can help with? Anything else we need to talk about? Do you need a list of the town-owned properties? Did you? If, uh, yeah, if you could, then I can be, I can supply some more answers and do more um, 
like I said, I, I need to have uh, addresses, and which I have on the fire station, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, it's like 8 Merrimack Road or something. But, um, and I'm assuming that the, the building that has completely white roof that has red trucks in front of it is the fire station. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, okay. Um, and that's the new building that we're most likely, you know, would be viable comparatively to the other who uh, Trish is telling me is probably not viable at this point. Station. Yeah. Um, Yeah, the PD it looks like half of it's black, probably rubber, and the other half is a lighter color. I'm not sure what, what it is, but it um, really comes down to, you know, what, again, the, what is the town's fis fiscal um, capacity? Because, again, you, you, can roll, you can put a roof replacement into your project if you wished, but uh, does that make sense for you all, you know? Um, but anyway, these are questions, you know, when I get some more information, I, we, we can revisit this and we can talk, um, you know, drill down a little more on, on feasibility for the different options you have, how much everything would be, how much it would cost, how much it would make for you. Because I, once I put all the information into the, um, the software, it, it, it spits out all the proposals which include all that projections on payback periods and profitability and how much we can offset your power usage etc that's where that's where it gets more interesting right what is the actual cost and impact to the town and then we look at the different options if you own it if you don't own it ppa what have you we have to explore all that. Now, if I can get some, some addresses to go ahead and do the ground, you know, the desktop, I can start looking at some of the possible properties. Um, and I would need, I would ask um, for some recent uh, b bills from the fire station. That's one thing I need to do in order to start the process on the proposals. Because I can, sure, we can put, you know, a, a quick design together and say, well, we'll handle this much. But if your usage doesn't match, then we, we might overbuild or underbuild your system. So I would need to have um, some recent billing information, right? Because yeah. we need to analyze the bill. We need to put it into the software. And then we can say, okay, well, this is the size you need to offset yourself 100% on your usage. Um, that's where we got to start, and then we can have a, a, a we can have a better conversation about all of the gritty details, which yeah. is which is really the interesting part. I just wanted to come here today to try to give you some kind of overview. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> and well, we uh, certainly appreciate your time. I appreciate yours as well. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen, you. ladies. Very nice to meet you, sir. Very nice to meet you as well. I will uh, save myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe? Okay. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate you. Sluckman Marshan, nice yeah. to talk to you. Thank you. I think I saw Mike wave too up on the video. <laughs> Take care. Have a good night. <laughs> Take care. Um, next up, we got Mike. Update, pa paving update. Good evening, board. Mike Pavero, road agent. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. You, you should have in front of you cost for this year's paving. You have that, comes yeah. up, total comes to 191. 230. Yeah. Okay. You see where the funds are being drawn from. Yeah. Sadly, and I don't think I gave it to Robin in the package, and I should have. Do you know which roads were paving? 
Yes. Was that was it in it? I think so. I saw yeah. one of um, Gale Village. I, yep. Okay. Wentworth and something else, right? Yeah. Uh, so as long as you see it and you see what's being allocated and what we're doing this year. Right. So a quick summary: those roads. It's really become a two-year contract with the paving contractor. That work was proposed for last year. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the funding for it. Mm -hmm. Bell and Flynn held the number, the unit cost number, from last year to this year. Because the work really should have been done last year, but because of budgetary reasons, mm -hmm. we couldn't do it. So he's completing that work this year. Um, the only road that's been added to that is, and we don't, we don't have to get pay mobilization because it's close to where he's working in town is Lincoln. It's a short road. Um, it's been in terrible shape. It's not a lot of tonnage, so I'm able to work that in to this year's funding. Any so questions? still have 100 after this? If Left in yes. the budget? I think it's like 125 or 128. Okay. Yeah. We just yeah, yeah, no, there's, there's, still, there's still funding left. I'm, I'm gl glad you brought it up because I was going to explain <laughs> to people that might not understand um, why, I don't, why I don't blow the whole thing right to the last penny. Mm -hmm. Next year, with um, what's scheduled next year is the worst road that now we have, because there's always a new worst road. What's the worst <laughs> road? Let everybody know what it is, Mike. That would be New Boston Road. Huh. And if anybody doesn't think it is, they can take a spin down there and, oh, yeah. and evaluate it on your own. Um, <laughs> but there's always a new worst road. Of the next year has one because we'll repair the worst one from the year before. There's a couple reasons why we're targeting New Boston Road next year. We're going to do that uh, in conjunction with Kingston. So New Boston Road will be done from 108 all the way to 125. Nice. Newton. So with Kingston, you guys are just going to use the same company and just have it all done. Correct. And we don't pay Good. for mobilization, Correct. Right? Yeah, no. no it's similar right. to what we, we did right. in Country, um, Pond. Country Pond. Right. I'd much rather that. Right. It's a little bit more complicated. This is going to be similar to Thornell when I did it. Uh, and I've been working on this now for probably six months or better. We, because it does not fall into uh, uh, transportation code is the island at 108 and New Boston Road, which is yes. a horror show. Mm -hmm. um, sight distance is the biggest issue when you're heading north on 108 and you try to take a left on New Boston. Um, I don't know how many accidents we've responded to at that intersection. Um, I'm working with the town engineer in Unito because there's a utility pole in the middle of that island to reconfigure that and make it safer and make it compliant. And I'm hoping by the t next time, this, you know, the season comes around next year that I've got everybody on board that can do what they need to do to move and mostly Unito has got to move that pole. And that's not an easy pole to relocate, but sure. we're working on it. Okay. But it might answer questions for people that are going, when, when are you going to come? Pave my road? Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean mine as in like No, no, that. I know. You my use road's not even on a list, so I'm good <laughs> no. with it. No, I'm it's good not even on a list. So. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows, next year the warrant might pass. Yeah. And then it's a whole different conversation. My road's still not on that list, <laughs> even with the bonds. Well, it, it, it may be. It may be an overlay, but it may, it may still make the list. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks, Mike. All right. Thank I you. appreciate it. Uh, everybody good with it? We can award it to him, even though it was really a continuation. I still want. Yes. Yeah, we'll award it to Bell and Flynn. I don't think you need it. It's the it's the same price. He's holding the same price as last year. Yeah. So no, that's fine. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Well, thanks, thanks, Mike. Mike. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, next on the agenda, communications tower update. My update is we, we, not us, don't have a copy of said lease. Said lease is with the legal department right now and they're going over it. When we have the lease and we've reviewed it, we will then set a date for the public hearing. 
You guys good with that? Yep. I figured you were. Um, next up is the scrap metal vendor review. We have requested um, scrap metal vendors, or we requested our transfer station director to get some quotes on scrap metal. We are not, that's why if everybody who's out there watching, our pile is so big, we are discontinued our uh, relationship with the current person that's doing it, and we're going to go with somebody else. Um, hopefully we'll have an update on who next meeting. I had a discussion today with the, uh, with the assistant manager down there, and he has uh, contacted three vendors and they're uh, they need to get back to them. Okay. So they would get back to them. And we're gonna, um, and we'll be supplied with what we're getting from this vendor, price-wise, so that we can compare it with the other ones. So, we we should have a. a I whole didn't know. <laughs> I have the pricing. Robin has the pricing that we're getting paid. And all right, just I'll put this out there. I don't really want to, but I will. So let's just say. No. We're getting the short end of the stick. Yeah. The extreme short end of yeah. the stick. So for light iron per ton, you're averaging 145, which is the low side, to 180 per ton right now, currently, like today. We were getting paid $20 a ton. Wow. And that's why he's letting it build up the way he does and then comes in and cuts himself a nice big check. So the last amount that was taken out, had we used today's price, it would have been $4,000. The town of Newton got paid $289. Yeah, that ain't happening. Right. So when I found out about this, is kind of set the things in motion to where we are now, right? Right. Um, well, I had mentioned it before. And I, even I, where the and, money and I get it. And everybody has. And it's just once I saw that last one, that's when I we had to do something about it. Yep. So now we have. Um, and going forward, hopefully it'll be correct and, and we'll get a better rate. So deal with the pile for now. Mike, actually, while you're sitting there, you push that pile <laughs> back for us, buddy. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> Thank assistant, you. The assistant manager asked that I ask you. Because he's afraid to talk to you. you <laughs> so scary, man. <laughs> Can you push the pile back for us? Sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so that is that. Um, Chief, can you come up for us and enlighten us about the status of our ambulance? <laughs> I'm sure we have a couple questions for you that hopefully you can answer, and then uh, we'll go from there. Yep. Uh, the town received the invoice per the board's vote last September to purchase it. Uh, you have that invoice. The truck is still at Greenwood. Myself, the deputy, and Captain Zielinski went down to drop off the radio so they can install the radios into it. The lettering is getting done within the next couple of weeks. Uh, the dis big decision is the stretcher. The agreement was uh, to take, which it's in the agreement that the board signed, to take the old stretcher, which was paid for through a grant, through APA, I believe it was, which is the top of the line stretcher. You can't get a better stretcher than that. That's why the intent was to take it out of the old ambulance, put it in the new ambulance, take the old stretcher that came out of the old ambulance, and put it back into the old ambulance. Since all that was, sorry, I got a call. Since that was the game plan a year ago <coughs> and the ambulance came in, we reached out to the vendor that put the old, the new, took the old stretcher out and put the new power load stretcher in. Right. They will not put the old stretcher back in the ambulance. I don't blame them. Uh, in talking, to the manufacturer, they will not put the old stretcher in, and the reason for that is, unbeknownst to anyone here, the sta uh, the code has changed on the way the stretcher could be secured. Sure. New sh new sh well, stretches have to be secured that if the ambulance rolls over, goes on its side, the stretcher does not fall out. 
with right. the old Makes sense. system was mechanical deny. So that puts us where we are today. To, there's technically three options. Well, there's four options. One option is to get a new power load, which to put in a 20-year-old ambulance, not recommended. And what that is is uh, it's a one-person load. You hit a button, it comes out by itself, it goes down, it releases. You put the patient on, hit a button, goes up, loads itself in. That needs to go into the new ambulance unless there's funds to buy a new one for the new ambulance. If there's no funds to buy a new one for the ambulance, we submit it to the board. It's called a one and a half person. It's still power, but it takes two individuals to load it up, to pick it up and load it in to the ambulance and then it, the legs come off. The other option is to try to find somebody to put this old one back into the old, old ambulance or just not run the old ambulance. Those are basically the options. Unfortunately, none of us knew that we were going to get here today a year ago. And I've said this a million times, if I knew that, I'd be playing the lottery. So, Chief, let me ask you, so we am the long and short of it is, the new power lift one that we bought and we got in the uh, first ambulance, yes. how much did we pay for that? That was 60000 plus, because you had to pay for the stretcher and then you had to pay for the, the system. The place, right. Yeah. Correct. So, <clears throat> is they still at that price now? Roughly? Yes. And so, just so the people out there understand, we're also saving $60,000 because we went with the, the new truck, correct? I'm sorry. I we we saved $60,000 on the contract with the new ambulance? 6000 6000 6000 Okay. How much were they charging us to do the swap, and is that... So like it, it, it was, yeah, that was not broken down. That was included in the, the contract, you could say, the specs that was submitted to the town. So I guess that's that my included. question. If we say we didn't do any of that, are we getting a, uh, uh, a discount, so to speak? You see what I'm saying? Yes. We have the price they quoted us. Yes. We, we saw that, but like... Yes. Now that let's just say we don't put an ambul uh, we don't put a stretcher in it at all, and then they're not taking the old stretcher out of the old ambulance. Correct. Is there a credit for that? Right. Is there a credit? I did ask that question. What he said was the credit was already worked into the price, so that could be the six thousand dollars. Okay. <clears throat> that mm -hmm. you're saving from the original price from last year. Okay. Okay. They are prepared to do whatever we want the board wants to do if the board decides to get a whole new stretcher that w the truck in which so the board knows I did agree to it <clears throat> the, the new ambulance could be done in about a week I told him to leave it in North Attleboro instead of bringing it down to Newton and making a decision on a stretcher and then, and then driving it back to yeah. North Attleboro I right. told him just leave fine. it in North Attleboro. I understand. A decision just has to be made because the ambulance, I believe that tonight the board's going to vote to pay that invoice. So right. a decision has to be made on which way we're going to go. Either purchase a whole new power load to put in the new ambulance and keep the old one here. Take the power load that's in the current ambulance put it in the new one and buy a stretcher for the old ambulance let's say we swap them what's the downtime on the old ambulance how long won't we have an ambulance for it if the if you buy a new one and put it in the new ambulance there is no down, downtime on the old one if we purchase uh Again, not the top of the line. You purchase a stretcher. You purchase the stretcher. The what Greenwood is willing to do is between the fire department and Greenwood, we would set it up that they would do the swap right here in Newton. 
So I, I would have to say probably about a day. They'll take the old, the current stretcher, put in the new ambulance, put the new stretcher in the old ambulance. They would do it right here so we would not have to take our current ambulance, the old one, and drive it to North Attleboro and drive it back. Per personally, we're saving six, six thousand dollars. What they would charge us to do the swap and swap and not all that out. The fact that we're going and running our own ambulances, yeah, I, it only no. makes sense right. to put another new stretcher in the new truck and leave the one right. as is equipped right. the way it is now. There's no sense in playing games mm -hmm. and Mickey Mouse and to where we're, <coughs> we're the, I mean, this is, we're talking about 911 services here. I mean, let's not be, you know, is this the same? Any foolish and, or however that. The quote that we have, is that the same structure in both? Stupid. You, you should have two quotes. You should have one. The power The strike alone. Yeah. The, well, this. I have one in front of me. One okay. quote. There's, there should have been two. One is for, I believe, 60,000, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. And one is for uh, mid 20s. Okay. Okay. The, the 60,000 is a brand new one to put into the new ambulance. <coughs> the 20 something thousand is to put into the old ambulance. Okay. So but is this six, is this, is this striker one, the same type of one that we put in the old ambulance? The one that Similar you bought to power. Oh, yeah, yeah. correct. That's what we I'm have striking now. Right. Yes. That's what I'm going with. Correct. It's the same it, thing. So then both ambulances will have the same Newer striker. version, same thing, yeah. like whatever. Yeah. That's what I okay. wanted to know. The, the other thing is in talking about saving funds, as the board knows, uh, I wrote a grant, an AFG grant, FEMA grant. We will know in a week to two if we were awarded approximately $65,000 for EMS equipment, a new monitor, a uh, bunch of other stuff to go with it. Once we get Fingers crossed, once we get that, you're also going to be saving six, about $65,000 right. for the future. Speaking we we of didn't need it for the new ambulance. Speaking of equipment, Go ahead. do you know off the top of your head how much you've spent out of your equipment purchase line, if you had to guess? If I had to guess, I would say approximately 7500 Okay, and what about your... I know I'm asking these questions on the spot, but I gotta know. Uh, vehicle repairs. That I honestly couldn't tell you, because, and the reason I say that is I just shot an email to the Board of Selectmen. They when? I think in. <laughs> I, sent the, I sent an email to the Board of Selectmen, uh, I believe it was last week, that two of those, the two oldest fire apparatus, failed its annual pump certification that we will know Greenwood is coming down on Thursday uh, to look at them and give a quote. Okay. So that one, I honestly... So how much is in the other fund you were talking about? The equipment one? Yeah. 25. And mm -hmm. how and much 75. is in the one that we were just talking about? 32. I wouldn't, with all due respect, I would not no problem taking funds out of the equipment. I would leave funds in there if we awarded the grant. I have a backup. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. I have a backup. I'm good. Thank you. Um, all right. So yes. I'm going to make a motion that we have the new power lift stretcher installed in a new ambulance while it's sitting in Greenwood and authorize the chief to talk to them about seeing if maybe we can't get it at a reduced cost for installation. Already done. The quote that both sent Greenwood yep. sent in a quote and uh, Greenwood sent a quote and so did Stryker. They, yep. They're both close to the same price. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. 
I'll second. second. Well, what's the what's the cost? So I can put that in. Fifty-eight five seventy. What was it? Fifty-eight thousand five hundred seventy. That's it. Just say up to sixty, just yep. in case. Up to sixty thousand dollars, we'll say. Yeah. Uh, seconded by. I second it. Joe, a. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's you unanimous. You want to do a roll? You call? need to do a roll call. Oh, yeah, Mike's yeah, up there. Yeah, Mike. Mike. <coughs> Damn. Aye. Joe A. Aye. Joe S. Aye. Bob. Aye. And I'm an I. That's unanimous. Fantastic, Chief. Okay. Thank you. Are you going to be set for the transfer of the funds? I got. I right. got. I'm going to go to this call. I got it figured out. Thank you. No worries, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Um, you have a motion for this. Anniversary fund. Okay. For the town anniversary fund. I'll make a motion to uh, pay American Thunder Fireworks ten thousand um, dollars to be expended out of the town anniversary revolving fund. Second. Seconded by may, motion made by Dan. Seconded by Joe A. All in favor? Aye. 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 Roll, roll call. Roll call. Oh, roll call. Mike. Mike. Aye. Joe A. Aye. <laughs> Joe S. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dan is an aye. That's unanimous. We have a question. What's the question? There's, a young, oh, there's a young lady online who may have worked for the town before. Oh, Diane. <laughs> hi. hi. This hi, is Diane. Diane. Um, I just have a question. I may have missed it, but where are the funds coming from for this new uh, striker stretcher? I haven't gotten to that yet. But you voted to buy one, but you don't know where you're getting the money from. No, I know exactly no, we know. where you are getting the money from. We know where we're getting it from. We just haven't I know where it's coming said from. where the no. funds are going to come from yet. We haven't made it that far yet. Okay, that should it probably be your next step before you move on. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to transfer 25000 from the Highway Salary Fund 4311200 to, to the Equipment Purchase Fund in the Fire Department account of 4220301. Second. Okay. Motion made by Dan, seconded by Joe A, and that's a roll call vote. Mike? Aye. Joe A? Aye. Joe S? Aye. Bob Marshall. Aye. And Dan's and I, that's unanimous. Can Lisa have her hand up? Sure. Why not? Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, I'm just wondering why, uh, what the purpose is to move it from one li line item to another? To pay for the stretcher. Okay, so you're moving money from the highway budget Yep. to the fire department budget to pay for the stretcher? Yep. Okay, I think that should be part of that motion so people know what we're doing. I, Thank you. Remember, I don't know how much clearer I could have said. You already made a motion. No, you just said to... I said highway salary to the fire department and I oh, gave account numbers. Account numbers. I gave line numbers. Yep. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Um, the next... One. You just didn't say to pay for the stretcher. <laughs> She still has her hand up. Go ahead, Lisa. Did I just left her hand up? Okay. Lisa, there's something else? Your hand's still up. Uh, no, usually somebody un removes the hand when we're done. Never mind, I I'll get it. I got you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right. Um. <laughs> All right, 
We're going to make some motions to move around for the purchase of the ambulance. Who's, who's up? I move to allow the trustees of the trust funds to issue a check in the amount of $123,570 funds to come from the fire apparatus account ending in 6236 and issue it to the treasurer of Newton for deposit into the emergency management revolving account. Second. Motion made by Joe S. Seconded by Joe A. Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Joe? Aye. Bob? Aye. Dan? Aye. That's unanimous. Bob? Next one? Yep. I authorize the Newton Finance Office to withdraw $40,000 from the ambulance service revolving account ending in 5060 said check to be issued to the treasurer to be, to be yeah easy for me to say <laughs> deposited into the emergency management operations account that's one motion second motion made by bob seconded by joe s mike aye joe aye joe aye bob aye aye that's unanimous I authorize the Newton Finance Office to withdraw $80,000 from the operating budget of the American Rescue Plan Act, also known as OPER account. Said check should be issued to the treasurer to be deposited into the emergency management operation revolving account. Second. Motion made by Bob, seconded by Joe S. Mike? I'd say second for discussion is a hand up. Sure. Hey guys, I, I didn't catch it in time on the previous motion, but I need to say it for this motion and the previous motion. The finance office is not authorized to withdraw anything, only the treasurer is. So could you amend your motions to authorize the treasurer to withdraw and deposit into? Make it so. Yeah, finance, print the check. Either one, yeah. Okay. As long as it's getting put in there. Is everybody good with that amendment? Mike? Aye. Joe? Yes, aye. Joe? Bob? Aye. And I'm aye. Robert? Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I got it. Okay, thank you. So we're going to do the roll call on the second motion. Oh, yeah, Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Joe? Bob? Aye. Dan? Aye. Unanimous. All right, so Lisa's got permission to put the money from those two accounts into that one account. You need the finance to issue the check for you. I move to allow the finance, uh, excuse me, move, move to allow the, sorry, I move to allow the new treasurer to issue a check in the amount of $373,000. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Joe. Mike? I can't, I can't vote. So Joe sounded mumble. I see the reading what the motions are in front of me, but the audience will not know what he said. Could you reread that, please? I move to allow Newton Treasurer to issue a check in the amount of 3,070. $3,773,500 to Greenwood Emergency Vehicles for the purchase of an ambulance. Funds to come from the Emergency Management Revolving Account. Thanks, Joe. Aye. Joe? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Lisa's got her hand up again. Go ahead, Lisa. All right, uh, we have two separate accounts. We have emergency management and emergency management operations. The funds you've been having put in the emergency management operations, which means this check needs to come out of emergency management operations. No. I just need you to add the word operations to the motion. So that's the 
one where all the other money is in, right, Lisa? Correct. And then we're adding that extra money to be able to cover that amount. Yes, the emergency management operations account has 223,000 in it right now. Okay. The emergency management account has 5,000. Okay, so yeah. So emergency management. So we need to add the word in operation uh, operations. Yeah. So I can amend that to add in the word uh, to add in emergency management operate operations <laughs> revolving account. Second. Yes. Second by Joe. Thank you, Lisa. Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Joe? Bob? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous for that amendment. Mike? I said I. No, we voted on the amendment. Now we're voting on the motion. Aye. <laughs> Joe? Aye. Joe? Aye. Bob? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. <laughs> Um, so it's going to be the same in the next one. That needs to be changed. Also, no, I did fix it. Um, um, did we skip the first one? No, we did. No, we did not. So the trustee of the trust funds to issue a check. I don't think we hit that one. Did we? Did we? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was Joe Ray on the second day. I thought. Yeah. You did one okay. for 123,000 from okay. the fire apparatus account, right, which but, is a trustee account. But we did not name the operations account. We named the management revolving account. So we're we going to amend that one. So we need to amend So we that. need to amend it. So I'd like to offer an amendment to the that stating that it goes into the emergency emergency management operations revolving account. Second. Motion made by Joe. Seconded by Joe. Mike. Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Joe? Bob? Aye. Nam and I. Put it all right. Oof. <laughs> all right. So it was in this one. one. So now the, the next one is basically the same thing, right? So the next one is really kind of the same thing. Um, I'm going to ask Lisa since she's on. You want Lisa still? Oh yeah, I'm still here. Oh great. So now that I have transferred the funds from the highway department to the uh, equipment purchase line in the fire department, I need to put that money into the emergency management operation account. For it to be used towards the ambulance, correct? The stretcher. All right. Um, if well, if the funds um, for the stretcher is totally coming from the main operating account, then you don't have to move it. Okay, fantastic. That's what that my question If it's partial, about. then you would have to um, nope. move it. It's all in there now, with the exception of that 25 that I moved. That's going in there, so it'll be there. Then you're fine. It can be paid for out of the main account. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to move to allow, who are we saying, the treasurer? Treasurer, treasurer. treasurer to issue a check in the amount of 58570 to Greenwood Emergency Vehicles for the purchase of the striker stretcher, funds to come from the Emergency Management Operating Account. Second. Motion made by Dan, seconded by oh, Joe. Hold on, hold on. You just said funds to come from the Emergency Management Operating Account, but you told me you were going to pay for it out of the main operating account. I'm sorry, that's, I meant the, the emergency management revolving account, Lisa. Okay, if you want to pay for it out of the emergency management operating account, then you need to move it from the main account to the emergency management account. Then it can be paid for. Okay. So two, two motions. That's one fine. to move the money into the, uh, to op authorize to withdraw from the main operating account to be deposited into the emergency management operations account, and then a second motion to pay the 53000 or whatever it is out of the, the emergency management operating account. Okay, we were, I got you. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to move $25,000 from line 4220303, which is equipment purchase in the fire department, to 
the emergency management operations revolving account. Second. Motion made by Dan, seconded by Joe. Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Bob? Aye. Dan, and I'm an aye. Uh, Dan? You Please. just authorized to move, cannot move. Authorized to withdraw. Friendly and amendment, then everybody good with separate. that? Yes. yes. Authorized to withdraw, yeah? Mike? Yep. Joe? Yes. yes. Uh, yes. Bob? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're good. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Dan? I make a motion to make payment from the administration. <laughs> I move to allow Newton's treasurer to issue a check in the amount of $58,570 to Greenwood Emergency Vehicles for the purchase of the Stryker Stretcher funds to come from the Emergency Management Operations Account. Awesome. Right. Second. Motion made by Dan, seconded by Joe. Lisa, please keep your hand up. Mike. <laughs> My hand's up. <laughs> <laughs> so if I heard you correctly, this so second for discussion, please. Sure. If I heard you correctly, we're not going to go with fifty-eight thousand and change exact. Didn't we say sixty thousand dollars? We did say sixty. We did say sixty, Mike. Just in case there was a hiccup, you're right. Right. So what you need to make the motion up to sixty? Well, we have the contract. Uh, yeah. The contract. We have a contract right in front of us, though. Huh? Okay. I just want to make sure that. We're good. The I know what I know what we said. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we have a contract right in front of us for that exact amount, so I think we're good. Thanks for that catch, Mike. Lisa? Uh, I just want to second what Mike is saying here is if Greenwood comes back and says there's any other additional fees, we are not authorized to try to check for that, anything over that amount. Just, we can just say up to 60000 and it'll cover that. So okay. Mike, you good with that amendment up to 60? Uh, can I sleep on it? No. No. I'm kidding. I, I like to take you off a little bit, but yes, yes. I'm good. Joe? Yes. Joe. Yes. Bob? Yes. I'm an eye. That was the amendment. Now we're going to go forward with the motion, Mike. Are you in favor? Aye. Joe? Aye. Joe? Aye. Bob? Aye. And I'm an eye. Trisha, you can text the chief and tell him he's good to go. Okay. Did that, did that. Uh, who's going to open you? Uh, I move to authorize a tax collector to collect a timber yield tax in the amount of $2.25 for tax map 6-15-2. Second. Motion oh, by Joe, seconded by Joe. Mike? Uh, is that amount correct? $2.25? Yes. 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 Yeah. Right here. It's a big money, but. Yeah. Mike? Aye. Joe. Aye. Joe. Aye. Bob. Aye. And I'm an I. That's unanimous. Okay. I move to approve the payroll manifest in the amount of $71,509.82 for pay period July 14th through July 27th, 2024, with a pay date of August 1st, 2024. Payment includes $0 in opera class. Second. Motion made by Joe. Seconded by Joe. Mike? Aye. Joe. Aye. Joe. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dan's and I. That's the names. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of one million seven hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred twenty-eight dollars and zero and one cent, with the pay date of July twenty-fourth, twenty twenty-four. Payment includes one million six hundred and seventy-eight thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars to the Sanborn Regional School District and nine thousand five hundred and three dollars and fifty-three cents. To the health trust for health care costs. Second. Motion made by Joe. Seconded by Joe. Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Joe? Aye. Bob? And I'm an I. That's unanimous. I move to approve a withdrawal in the amount of $217.90 from the emergency management revolving account with a pay date of July 24th, 2024. Payment is to Estabrook's Garage for fuel. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Joe. Aye. Aye. Joe. Aye. Joe. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dan, I'm an aye. 
That's unanimous. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of $34,429.24 for the pay date of July 30th, 2024. Payment includes $22,570.26 to G. Mellor Disposal Corp and $3,503.50 to Valcon Quake and Company for Auditing Services. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Joe. Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Joe? Aye. 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 Dan's and I, that's unanimous. I move to approve the manifest in the amount of $24,801.21 with a pay date of July 30th, 2024. Payment is to New Hampshire Retirement System. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Joe. Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Joe? Aye. Bob, Dan, is an aye. That's unanimous. I move to approve and accept the public meeting minutes dated July 16th, 2024. <coughs> Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Joe. Mike? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain because I was not clear in the fact that when I tried to watch, there was a glitch on the video, so I couldn't even, I had no audio, so there's no way I could verify. Sure thing. And I'm an eye, so that is four eyes and one abstention. I move to approve and accept the non-public meeting minutes dated July 16, 2024, as written. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Joe. Mike? I'll abstain. I wasn't at that meeting, nor do I have uh, access to that record. Joe? Aye. Aye. And for the same reason, I'm going to abstain. And I'm an aye. So that is three eyes and two abstentions. <laughs> Trish, do you have an update that you would like to give that you're hanging out for? No, I think we're good. Okay. Fantastic. Well, I would just like to take a moment to thank Trish while she's here for all her hard work that she's been doing during this heat wave uh, for our residents and the people that have needed assistance. Checking on and everybody. Everything that she's been, been doing for the training and, and all of that for all the other stuff for the emergency people. Speaking of training, we should let everybody know what close to that. Yep, and an FYI, Town Hall is closed tomorrow um, due to training. Oh, I am going to bring this up on our new business. Um, right now, our health officer is um, not Robin. <laughs> our health officer, Mike Dorman, is um, responding to uh, calls, whether it be uh, hoarding or stuff like that, right? Yeah. There's no payment in there for that. So I think we need to correct it. Um, yeah. So we're gonna come up with something yeah. and put it out there and uh, we'll, we'll probably discuss it um, at the next meeting. We'll put a dollar amount on it. It's probably, I'm thinking, just gonna be flat. flat like when he goes up, yeah, just right. when he goes up and just be done yeah. with it, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, Cause I feel bad that he's actually he's called a couple times yeah. and he's not getting compensated at all mm -hmm. for right. it. You know, and some of them may take 20 minutes, some of them may take a couple hours or over the course of, a, you know, a week or so. So, so I think in, in talking with Mike, he's fine with a flat fee, yeah. which is fine for me. And, um, yeah. but, uh, we'll discuss it and we'll get it on the agenda and have it written out some language written out on uh, how it will be. Um, but that's, that's all I have. You got any, uh, I'm, I'm good. Bob? Um, just that the master plan is going well. I'm trying to get my uh, dear year in action to get uh, get that CIP going. My unfortunately my printer is giving me difficulty, so I'm going to come in. I talked with Robin. She's going to give me a hand with some of that so that we can get that going forward. Um, we're looking at another grant to help out with some more of the. CIP, um, so things are looking good. I mean, the master plan, um, so the town's master plan is um, coming together and it's getting up to date, which is nice. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 Mike, you got anything? Is he going to do it? Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.